Hello there, inquiring minds out there, in there, are all around the world, on all the ships at sea. Welcome to Inquiring Minds live stream for April. And my name is Doug, and welcome to my channel and the live stream. We already have a number of people here. Uh, let's check. And there's Tor Hilder, of course. <laughs> Hello, Tor Hilder. I think Russell was first. Russell Bickford. And did you say you're in Augusta, Maine? It must be snowing there. Let me know what the weather is like in your area. Virginia was like second. I charged with these guys with the responsibility since they were first to check my video and my audio to make sure I'm working okay. So you can hear me. Test, test. This is a test. Anybody hear me? And Nabirjan Raghavan is here. He was like third in. You guys came in early. I started the stream early. Someone had suggested uh, the, after the last stream uh, in, uh, in March that I start the stream early so people can uh, acquire the link and uh, be here right off the bat. So that's great. Audio is perfect. Torhilder, thank you very much. Hello to uh, Matthew Nevins from Fairfield, Connecticut. O-B-G-Y-N, Kenobi. Okay. Uh, from Austin. Thank you. O-G. O-B. And there's Copperplate from Germany. Hello, Copperplate. Welcome back. And there's Michael Reiber from Thailand. Oh, yeah, he's captain. And there's Dean DeRoche. DeRoche. De, De did I say that right, Dean? DeRoche. Good morning from the Okanagan. Hey, fellow Canuck. And there's Oscar Medina. What's up? What's up, man? San Diego. There is, there is Harry. Welcome back, Harry. Me again. Always enjoy your streams. Thank you very much. Always enjoy having you here. It's uh, so much nicer to have people here rather than just talking to myself. Um, you know, because if people look in on you and you're talking to yourself, they might lock you up. That's not a suggestion, by the way. Uh, Spyron691 is here. And Tobias from Westphalia, Germany. I just uh, was corresponding this morning with a gentleman from uh, from Germany. His name is Dirk, who's just bought, where is it? Here it is, the Parker 51 that I restored a couple of weeks ago. It's a beautiful, interesting, quirky little pen that uh, polished up and cleaned up beautifully. So he's just bought that, and that's going to go out to him in Germany. And I sold that uh, Parker 51 that it was for sale for a long, long time, since before Christmas. It was a Demi. I sold it to someone in uh, Victoria, British Columbia. And uh, she's received the pen and really, really enjoys it. So I'm really happy about that. These sales of some of these pens that I resurrect actually uh, fund the sale of, or the, my purchase of new dead pens. New old dead pens from which I can do a video and do a rasterization. Rasterization. Restoration. And who else is here? Sasa Wrights from Germany. Well, we have a few people from Germany. I'm going to have to brush up on my, my Deutsch, Deutsche speak. Sprachen Sie Deutsch. No, I don't. And there's Lertica. Good morning from Vancouver Island. That's Carlo. Hey, Carlo. Good to see you. How are things in Vancouver? How's the weather? Your team, the Canucks, are doing very, very well. I'm on to uh, the Blue Jays, the Toronto Blue Jays and baseball, because my Flames, although they're not finished their season yet, they're done. Done like dinner. There's Kathleen Baldwin. Hi from Maui. Well, well, well. 
Send me a ticket. I'll join you. Must be nice in Hawaii today. Georgia is sunny and 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, we're not too bad here. We had a, a bit of snow uh, over the last couple of days. Uh, we had a bit of spring and then a bit of winter and then a bit of spring and a bit of winter. So it's uh, it's odd dress day here or odd dress season in Calgary where you uh, wear shorts and flip-flops and a big heavy coat and mittens. Virginia wants to know what pen will be going to be reviewed today. Well, when I do a live stream, Virginia, I don't do a uh, review video on the Saturday. Uh, I sort of give myself the day off. And uh, so I do this live stream and then there's no review. But tomorrow, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself actually because I've got an agenda of things to talk about. And one of the things on my agenda is to say what's new. So we're going to look at what's new and what's old as well because I'm going to be talking about uh, pens that are new that I'm going to be reviewing in the upcoming weeks and some old pens that I'm going to be looking to restore uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks. Then we're going to look at Doug's mailbag. Uh, I asked people last week if they would send me email at inkquiringminds at gmail.com with your questions for my live stream and then I'll do a Doug's mailbag and read out the questions and try to answer them uh, during the live stream. So we'll look at uh, it, my mailbag. And then I have a question for all you guys. Uh, and that is about the Lamy Uniball Lilac uh, controversy and sale. So Lamy was sold to Mitsubishi Uniball and uh, that was one issue. And the other issue was their dark lilac ink controversy that set the pen world um, on fire. I don't understand why, and that's why I'm asking. Uh, so I want to know your opinion on that. I'll be asking that in a moment. And then, of course, I'll open it up for your uh, general questions, any questions you might have. And then we'll talk about when the next live stream is and what the topics might be. So... Let's get at what's new, shall we? Uh, first of all, let's just catch up on what people are saying on my scroll here. Ivan says, hello from Houston, Texas. Hello, Ivan. Thank you for joining us. Tobias says, thing is, in Germany, most people write with fountain pens at school. So the fountain pen hobby is usually a rediscovery of sorts. Um, also think that's why many people here find royal blue boring because that's the school color. Well, yeah, that, that quink, we know in North America know it as, know it as the quink blue. And many of us grew up with fountain pens in school, but I know in Europe, in many parts of Europe, especially Germany, uh, that, uh, Pelican student pen, I think is the, the pen that everybody learns to write with. And so it's, uh, like rediscovering your youth when you discover a fountain pen again. But let's get on with uh, what's coming up. Uh, so I'm going to start with uh, what's old that's coming up. Let's turn on my desk camera here. Here we go. And I'm going to move my mic, pardon the mic noise, and move my mic over so you can still hear me. Tomorrow, folks, on Pen Resurrection Sunday, you'll be seeing this fountain pen, which is a uh, 19, circa 1940 um, Schaefer Balance uh, Vacuum Fill. And this was sent to me by John uh, of, uh, with, um, with a number of pens with it. This was the fourth of four pens that I restored. Uh, that John sent me. And I left this one to last because it was the most challenging. It was in really, really rough shape. Um, and it still is not 100%. Uh, but it has a gorgeous feather touch, 14 karat gold, very bouncy nib. And it is a vacuum filler. Uh, so vacuum fill. I'm not going to move that because it is full of ink. But take a look for that review uh, coming up tomorrow morning. 
Uh, I put my videos up at uh, 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific uh, Daylight Time now. Um, so do your area code area. Do your time zones accordingly. So what's coming up in the dead pen market? Well, I talked about in the video that I'm going to show tomorrow. Now I've got ink on my fingers. Just eat that ink. There we go. I talked about this pen in my video that I'm putting up tomorrow. This is a circa 1945 Parker Challenger. And it has some initials on it. Uh, this was loaned to me by a very good friend, Lori. Uh, uh, Wynn and I were at dinner at Lori and Michelle's place uh, a couple of months ago. And I uh, had a lovely time. They're long, long friends of ours. And uh, she knew that I'm a, a pen geek and was restoring pens. Actually, Michelle, her husband, is a pen guy too. Uh, he has a uh, uh, a little pen lathe kind of shop in his garage, and he makes pens out of kits. I did a video on him a while ago. I'll put that in the description of this video so you can see that. Uh, marvelous stuff he makes. But this was Lori's father's pen, and he took it to war with him. So we're thinking that it's like 1945 or just before he went to war, 40, 40, 44, 45, something like that. Um, and it's in really, really rough shape. So she asked whether I could do anything with it. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but it's bent beyond all recognition. So I'm going to give a try at trying to straighten that nib out. Now it's not going to write like it did when it was new because one of the tines, one of the tippings on one of those tines is broken off. So the best I can do is make a stub out of it. So I'm going to try that out in the next couple of weeks, maybe next week. Then I had, oh yes, pen friend Janice uh, was all excited. She sent me an email because she found this at an antique store locally here in Calgary. And uh, this is a Waterman's Starlet. It's made in Canada and it's in this lovely uh, caramel celluloid. It's a lever filler. I've done a review, uh, uh, a restoration of exactly this pen. I had one in exactly the same finish and uh, restored it, uh, gee, a year, a year and a half ago now, and sold it. Uh, so she sent it to me to see whether I could restore it. So I'm going to work on that pen for her. Lovely 14 karat gold nib. These are beautiful pens. And so I'm waiting for the sack to arrive for that. It has an issue in that the the clip just these clips were riveted in and there's no unscrewing it but it just is a fidget spinner now if anybody has a suggestion on how you can actually get that to not flop around like that i'd be willing to hear your ideas because i have no idea how to do that and for new pens coming up this isn't new to me, actually. I've had this for a while, but I've just not gotten around to reviewing it. This is an A108. I have no idea what the A stands for. There's no branding on it. But the chatoyancy of this acrylic really amazed me for the, the inexpensive nature of this pen. Look at that. I paid nearly $70 US for a an Admoc M800 that had... A terrible acrylic on it and I pawned that off on Marilyn is Marilyn here yet <laughs> Marilyn darling are you here uh, Marilyn quite generously offered me uh, the uh, the galaxy that uh, that Marilyn had uh, in exchange for mine and uh, that's a and I've received that and there it is and that beautiful galaxy. This is very similar to that galaxy acrylic. And so this A08, again, I have no idea what the brand is. It's got a generic Chinese nib on it. So I'm going to do a review of that cartridge filler pen. 
And then I'm going to look at this uh, Moon Man Madge On. Uh, nice acrylic little lipstick pocket pen, uh, which has a little bit of a surprise to it. Uh, it screws to post. It has an interesting delight nib, which why wouldn't it have a Moon Man nib on it? It's a uh, Madge On. Uh, da, 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 what's the name of this? The Madge On um, A8. It's an A8. Uh, but it also comes with this little glass dip pen insert. So you can take that fountain pen nib out of there and put it in and make it your dip pen. I use dip pens for ink samples and things like that. So we'll be doing a review of that pen. Also, I think I have to go over to my computer here for a moment. And where are you? Full computer. There you are. And we're going to look at this picture here. This is the Asvine V200, which has just been released. It's available on Amazon right now for extraordinary amounts of money. It's titanium, and I made a deal with, uh, what's your name, Sally at Easy Buy. Um, it's not available on Etsy yet, on the Easy Buy Etsy store, uh, but I wrote her and said, send one to me and give me a discount. So I got a discount on it to make it reasonable. It is the um, titanium version. Whoops. Now what happened? Let's go back to my desk. It is the titanium version of this pen. This is the first Asvine. They sent me this, Asvine did, a couple of years ago. And this is the V169 vacuum filler. It's a very heavy. You can use this for hand-to-hand -hand combat. This, this pen is quite a hefty thing. But I think what they've done is they've just made a titanium version of this pen, which is the Asvine P36 uh, piston filler. And uh, you can see the color on this. I anodized that myself. But back to my computer, this pen, the V200, seems to be the sort of square end version of the P36 uh, and the vacuumatic, or it's not vacuumatic, the vacuum filler version of the P36. So that should be coming in the next couple of days, I'm thinking. And why does that keep doing that to me? And here we go. And so I'll be looking at that pen. So that's something to look forward to as well. Let's catch up on what people are saying while I was blathering on. And Gina for, for, Ford, Gina Ford. Hello, Gina. Good morning. Snowing here in Montana. I'm from Calgary, missing all my family and friends over there. Well, a shout out, shout out to a fellow Calgarian. Uh, Man, Montana's beautiful, and you get similar weather to what we have here in Calgary, as you probably know. Uh, Jose Munoz says... Cuando haces más reviews de plumas. Uh, in translation, that means I have no idea what he just said. And there's my Russian friend. In Russia, no one uses fountain pens. I'm the only guy who uses fountain pens in school. I'm sorry I can't pronounce your name. I don't speak acrylic. Marie Marie, question. Why do you think is the reason... What do you think is the reason that the fountain pen bug is so easy to catch. It got me and I don't have an explanation, so I'd appreciate your thoughts. Well, um, yeah, it snuck up on me as well. I I used fountain pens when I was in school and then became, a, in my career, I was a, a theater designer. And so I was doing a lot of drafting and things like that. So I was using technical pens and technical pencils, uh, mostly for my drawing and drafting and got away from fountain pens. but. Uh, when I retired, uh, I sort of accidentally fell into fountain pens and realized that, yeah, when I was in school, I really loved these. And I think it's because, for me anyway, 
it's because my handwriting sucks and especially with a pencil or a ballpoint pen not so bad with a rollerball but still pretty awful um, but when i got into fountain pens again i realized that it makes you slow down a little bit it makes you be more careful and with little pressure on the page you can get some really nice lines out of it and so it became a sort of a creative uh, thing for me uh, that I liked the way my handwriting started to look and never wanted to use a ballpoint again unless I have to so that's my answer to that question thank you for that question Marie Marie And Marie Marie says, I thought that Bennu started in Russia. Uh, that's true, but they moved to Armenia. Am I right? There's an A in there somewhere. Is it? Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Bennu moved to Armenia uh, when, they, uh, when the invasion of uh, uh, Ukraine happened. And uh, good on them. They make some really nice pens. Uh, Virginia says, I've seen that pen... I think it's probably a Jinhao. Torhilder says some hero factory had pen with model numbers like the A08. Yeah. Um, I was thinking it might, uh, I was thinking it might be a Jinhao uh, because there, I've seen a lot of sort of generic Jinhaos with that, that uh, generic Chinese nib on them. But I think you're right. But hero owns everybody anyway, so. It all traces back to Hero. I have a question uh, that was sent to me that I'm going to try to answer that touches on that subject. Uh, Lux Ferry, Lux Ferry, wow, managed to catch this live. It's 2036 here. And Virginia says 1047 there. And we're checking in from all around the world. That's wonderful. Yes, Russell Bickford says that. Uh, V200 is available on, on uh, Amazon, um, and it's uh, quite expensive on Amazon. I would kind of wait. Uh, um, I got a discount from Sally on Etsy, but she'll have that pen up on Etsy very soon, and I bet you it'll be less than what's on Amazon. I'm looking forward to it. It looks like interesting. Russell says, can the titanium parts be battery voodoo on that pen? Um, I'm assuming that's a typo and you mean um, anodized? Uh, sounds the same, voodoo, anodized, you know, it's close. But uh, I would think so. Uh, what I did with my P36 titanium was I took the uh, pen apart as much as I could and then I anodized the pieces. And it came out very nicely. Matter of fact, you can see those lovely colors. Nice blues. I liked it blue. So I might do that to the V200. We'll see. I think that titanium looks very, very sharp, very nice. But it's very uh, kind of bland as well. Okay, Virginia says, we are here in India watching you live. Thank you for joining me from India. Greetings from the Ukraine, by the way, from Lux Ferry. You go, guys. Hello from Finland. Josso says, hello from Finland. Uh, my Russian friend, maybe you can, I, I'll never remember, but maybe you can tell me what, uh, I can say is your name because I can't pronounce that. Uh, I wish if Asvine could make solid acrylics for the P50. Yeah, I wasn't impressed with the acrylic on the P50. It's a nice pen, but the acrylics are kind of meh, not so much. Uh, Pop Poplar Grove Baptist Church says Asvine seems to be Majon's upscale product opinion. Yeah, I'm going to answer that in a bit. Uh, Baptist Church, uh, because that's one of the questions that was sent in to me. We all pray for the people of Ukraine. Yep. Torhilder says to Marie Marie, search for all the psychology and the addictiveness of near misses. 
Is that near misses, uh, like fear of missing out? Could be. Ivan Arazo asks, do you, do you do your pen restorations as a job or more as a hobby? Oh, it's a hobby. <laughs> it's, once any of this becomes like work to me, even though I'm spending a lot of my week doing these things, if it feels like I'm going to work every day and I go, oh, I got to do another one, I'm going to stop. Because uh, as soon as it stops being fun, then I'm not doing it anymore. So keep making me smile, folks, and I'll keep doing videos for you. And that's what she said. That was for Oscar. Hey, Oscar, that's what she said. William Catalano says it's less fatiguing if you are writing for a long stretch of time as well. Absolutely. Um, yes, if you if you suffer from hand issues, as I do currently, uh, then you'll find that a fountain pen takes less wear on your hand uh, for long writing sessions. So if you do a lot of writing, and you're able to use a fountain pen, it takes all the pressure off your wrist and your hand. And there's Luke M. Sorry I'm late to the party. Welcome. Good to see you. Anindo, Anindo, I can't pronounce that, Anindo Chatterjee says, Greetings from India. I apologize in advance for all of the butchering I do of all of your names and your handles. I keep getting emails instructing me on how to say things like Asvine. Um, I've gone through a number of iterations of that. Uh, let's see, there was Asvine, which was my favorite. There was Asvine, which sounds very sexy because it sounds French. And then there's sort of a halfway between Asvine and Asveen. There's the Asveen, as if it's A-Z-V-I-N. So that's the way I pronounce it. But I, I particularly get taken to task for how I say Montblanc. Uh, because I write out my scripts when I do a review. And I used to write out things correctly. Montblanc. I would spell it correctly. And when I'm reading that, I read what is on the page, Mont Blanc. And it's not, it's Mont Blanc. So from now on, I'm writing Mont Blanc in my script. So I will read it like that. And then I won't get all that mail. Virginia says the Schaefer 100 and 9371 satin blue fountain pen is really good. Okay. I don't know that pen. If it's a modern Schaefer, I've got one modern Schaefer that I like. That's it. Tori Hilder says, near misses is what hooks gamblers. It always feels like the next uh, grail pen, next bet grail pen will be the winner. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It's a... Uh, for me also, I mean, other than the fact that I get a lot of fountain pens because I have to do these reviews um, for my channel, so I, I get more than I would ordinarily uh, have in my collection uh, if I weren't doing this. Um, one of the things is getting something new in the mail. You know, always being excited for something coming. It's like Christmas every time. Oh, get to unbox it, get to unpackage it, test it out, see whether it's any good. See whether you're going to have that buyer's euphoria or that buyer's remorse. There's the Night Owl from Austin, Texas. Welcome. Biohazard says, hi, Biohazard. Do you think you will ever get a Parker Modern Dual Fold? I was debating grabbing one over the Pelican M800, but I'm conflicted. Um, definitely... Well, then this is just my opinion, but the Pelican M800 is head and shoulders above the modern Duofold, uh, even a vintage Duofold. I've tried a, a modern um, Duofold Centennial and uh, nice, but just not my cup of tea. The Pelican, it takes a lot of ink. It's beautiful in the hand. It's got a nib that you just, it's one of the best in the world. 
the 800. I've tried the M1000 and it's a bit too flexy for me. Uh, and I've also got an M600, which I thought would be too small for me. But this has now become one of my favorite pens of all. This is a, a Pelican M600 and it's from the uh, 90s, I think. Uh, but I got it new old stock at, at a, an antique store. It had never been used. It's the transparent barrel and it has a broad 14 karat gold nib, which is just to die for. So I can't say enough about the Pelican M600 and the M800. So if you're asking my opinion, that's the direction to go. Okay, I'm going to go back to my agenda here. And we're going to look at Doug's mailbag. And I have an interesting intro on that too. Doug's mailbag. So Doug's mailbag. Let's go over. Let me prepare my desktop here uh, so I can go over to my computer and show you some of the questions that I had sent to me by email. And just as long as I get them. There we go. There's the other one. Okay, so I'm going to read them one at a time here. And actually... Let's go over to my computer, if I can find it. There we are. So this question is from Paul, and Paul is live with us today. So he said he was not going to be able to make it. Is Paul here, or is that another Paul? Put your hand up, Paul, if you're here. But uh, Paul McHugh sent me. I will not be able to see the live stream, hopefully the rebroadcast. I have a question. How long does it take for you to make a fountain pen review? And that's you. There you are, Paul. <laughs> so you, you lied to me. He lied. He's here. So your question, how long does it take for me to make a fountain pen review? Well, there are two things that I do. One is a review and one is a restore. So the Pen Resurrection Sundays, I'll talk about the review. Uh, generally, I will, when I get a pen, I do an unboxing. I'll put that video in the can uh, and wait for when I'm going to review the pen. Once I've inked the pen up, um, I write with it for a little while, say a day or two. And then when I decide to review it, um, I will sit down, write with the pen, and then get out my word processor and write a script. Uh, based on a template that I've written. And I talk about the features and so forth. And so that whole writing with the pen, writing the script, um, generally can take a half a day, something like that. So a morning or something like that. If I decide to start filming that day, I can generally get the script written in the morning, the, uh, the, the script filmed in the afternoon, uh, and then I spend the next day editing. Uh, so it would be an eight-hour day for the uh, script and the uh, filming. And uh, there's other things as well, taking photos, doing thumbnails, um, uh, taking measurements, writing all those things out. All that takes a day. And then I spend four, four hours, four and a half hours, something like that, editing. I'm getting much better at editing. Uh, now with my DaVinci Resolve, uh, I think it's version 18 now, which is a free video editing software, which is fabulous. And I've gotten a few tools as well. I've got a, uh, let's see if I can show you this. I've got a little device here uh, that is a scroll wheel and some macro buttons that allows me to um, zoom in, zoom out, pan back and forth, uh, hit buttons to cut and clip and paste and all that kind of thing that you need in video editing that has solved a lot of my uh, time issues. So I'm pretty much able to get a review done in a couple of days. Now um, I've done it in the past where I've done a review, written the script, filmed it and edited it all in one day. Uh, but that's a marathon. 
The pen resurrection videos take longer. Um, I will generally start on a Sunday on a pen and work on the pen and film as I go. And it'll take me, a, depending on the pen, a couple of days to do all of that. I end up with a ton of video. I end up with an hour of video and I have to edit it down to 30 minutes. So that generally, I'd say that takes about three days. And he had another question for me back here. It says, love your quotes. Where do you find these that are humorously relevant to the pen at hand? It's a good question. Thank you, Paul. Um, well, I might as well go back to, let's see what I can find it on my computer. And I will show you the website. No, I can't find it. Why won't you come up? Uh, because I'm live streaming. New window. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to bring this up. And I have to do a number of things to protect my identity here. Bookmarks. There we go. Let's see if I can bring this back to my computer now. So this is the site I use. Um, and I will search in the, it's called brainyquote.com. And there's a quote of the day you get every day. Uh, but in the search field here, I'll put in some kind of a word that relates to the pen I'm doing at the time and see what comes up. Or I'll choose a author or a topic like comedy, things like that. There's a quote of the day, a love quote of the day, art, nature, funny, and things like this. So if this one strikes me, Stephen Wright, I think he's hilarious. I bought some instant water one time, but I didn't know what to add to it. So you know, he has some really funny stuff. So I always like to inject a little bit of humor uh, into my quotes, and that is a font of information that um, brainyquote.com is where I get the most of them. And let's go back to my computer again because I got more questions here. And this one's from Rob Beamer. And Rob wrote to me, I don't know whether you can read this or not. Um, his question was, um, I just dis uh, I discovered recently discovered Hongdian pens uh, about that same time. Hongdian seems like a new company, and also it seems like there are a bunch of new Chinese pen companies. But I wonder, are they new companies or are they expansions of older companies? Um, can you or have you already tell us a bit a bit about the apparent explosion of Chinese pen brands, please? Yes, and uh, people. Um, alluded to that as well earlier in the chat today. Um, I can only guess at these things. The first thing I'll say off the top of my head is that uh, China is inscrutable. Uh, there's, it's so opaque when it comes to their companies and how their companies are aligned, how their companies are named, um, controlled, that you can't get any answers out of them. I have asked. I've even asked such benign Chinese pen companies as Pen BBS uh, about some of their history and how it all works, and there's no answer. It's just silence. Uh, so you have to speculate. At least I do. And the way I speculate on this is I look for similarities. Um, I look for things that are using the same parts. Now, many companies will build pens from the same parts and they'll get their parts from the same place. I'll give you an example. Um, this Galaxy on this Admoc M800 is the same Galaxy that you see on the Pen BBS Galaxy pens. It's the same Galaxy that you see on this Asvine P20. Exactly the same material as what you find on this uh, Moonman M800. It's exactly the same material. The same thing with that amber 
material that I call amber is a cat. Uh, they come from the same supplier or the same stock or whatever. Uh, some of the, the pistons we've seen are identical parts between various Chinese manufacturers. Uh, so is one company manufacturing all these parts and various brands are using them to build pens? My thinking is that most of the pen companies in China are owned by Hero. I know that they they own uh, Wingsung, both of them, Wingsung and Wingsung, because there's two different qualities of Wingsung pens. Uh, they're, and they're two different companies as well, but they're owned by Hero. Um, I believe that Hero owns a number of, of these pen manufacturers. Um, and these are all like sub-brands. I think... And again, this is just me speculating. I think Moonman and Asvine are the same company. Uh, their front person, Sally, um, has the uh, Amazon store and is pushing Asvine there, pushing Asvine on the Etsy store, easy buy, um, and always has the new stuff that comes out from Asv Asvine, but also had all that same stuff back in the day from Majon Moonman. So I think Moonman is Majon is Asvine. Um, and I think some other companies like Hongdian, uh, which they date their pens Hongdian 1997 or something like that. So we've only been aware of them since what, 2019, something like that. I, at least me, um, as a brand Hongdian, never heard of it before. Uh, but they say 1997. So they've been making pens as an OEM manufacturer for since 1997. And maybe they were making Schaefer's. Maybe they were making Parker's. Maybe they were making, uh, I don't know, name a brand that is Mo Monteverdi. Name a brand that's uh, a U.S. brand, U.S. brand, but they're all made in China. And one of these companies is making all those pens for them for decades. So I think all of these many names that you're getting, Lemon is another one that's just come out. I mean, perfect name. Isn't it? This pen is a lemon. That's perfect. <laughs> I don't get this naming uh, business, Asvine, Lemon. But uh, they're expanding all kinds of different names and brands to saturate the market in different ways, not, to not saturate the market with their brand. So maybe you got pissed off with Moon Man over the years because they're copying everybody. Uh, so you'll buy uh, an Asvine instead because, oh, that's a new company. Maybe they're better than Moon Man. I think they're the same. That's my thinking. And that's why there's been explosion of Chinese brands. Uh, you've got to take it all with a grain of salt. You've got to take their claims all with a grain of salt. And then there's the whole issue of the retailers. The retailers that you see on AliExpress and on Etsy and things like that, they name things whatever the hell they want to name them. And uh, there's, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, I for, I'm forgetting. It's Bobby. Bobby has a uh, pen store on AliExpress called Saint, Saint Pen PPS. Obviously a ripoff of Pen BBS, but he names that all of his pens on his site Saint, Saint Pen PPS whether it's a Moon Man or whether it's a Majon or whether it's a, a Jin Hao or whether it's a Wing Song, he calls it the Saint Pen PPS, even though the branding is right on the pen. So take all of that with a grain of salt. Um, there's a lot of fake stuff happening in the Chinese market as, as usual. Anyway, that's my ranting on that issue. Let's get back to some questions here. I'm going to scroll back to see what I missed while I was ranting. There's George Par... I'm going to get this right, George. George Parapodakis. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, did you... Uh, Luke Lux Ferry says, did you have a chance to use Czech inks like Kurinor? I didn't know Kurinor was Czech. I thought they were German. I think they are quite reliable for the price. I've never tried a fountain pen ink from Kurinor, 
Um, I have done used many drafting tools over my career from Kurinor. Some good stuff. Uh, Russell says, trivia question, what movie clip was Doug's mailbag from? <laughs> intro from? Yeah. Uh, you'll get uh, bonus points for all of those who answer my Doug's mailbag. For those of you that didn't see it, here it is again. Doug's mailbag. So what film was that from? <laughs> Bonus points to you, if you get that. Alfredo Gallardo. Hello, Alfredo. I remember when getting a new pen was exciting. Now I have to hide the packages because I got shamed at home for purchasing more pens. Well, they're only pens. Um, I used to, as you can see over, over here, there it is. As you can see over here, I got a line of guitars. And... Uh, when I lived on a larger house than this, I had more guitars and had to downsize when we downsized our home. But every time I brought home a guitar, uh, my wife got a piece of jewelry in exchange. Uh, and then um, she couldn't stand up with all the weight of the jewelry, so I'd buy furniture as well. Or it was the other way around. Oh, yes. When I first started buying guitars, she'd get a piece of furniture. Then we didn't have a big enough house for all the furniture, so she started getting jewelry. I'm reminded of that old uh, Don Rickles uh, routine where he'd talk about his wife getting dressed for dinner, and she'd lay on, on the bed and say, help me with the jewelry. She had so much jewelry she couldn't get up, so you had to help her off the bed. <laughs> but, yeah, I had to stop uh, getting guitars. Uh, at least with with pens, you're only maybe spending a hundred or a couple of hundred dollars every time you get a new pen. With a guitar, I was looking at um, five hundred, eight hundred, a thousand, two thousand. Roach the shoulder, five thousand, <laughs> um, and so that collection uh, started getting smaller. Yeah, uh, but it's easier to sneak. It's easier to sneak a uh, pen into the house. Uh, than it is uh, sneaking a guitar into the house. There's a great cartoon that uh, shows a man doing the vacuuming with an apron on and doing the dishes and stuff, and she's she looks at him and goes, you bought another pen, didn't you? And another one is, you bought another guitar, didn't you? Okay, so I just lost. What is this sort of review question? Okay, keeps flipping around on me, so I'm trying to track what you're saying, folks. Keep it up. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, Lairtica says, "What is your source for all those funny and witty videos that we love so much?" Uh, my my cutaways. Well, uh, they're from all sources. Um, uh, so wherever it's usually YouTube, uh, I will search YouTube, uh, using a phrase, uh, to get like for the office. If there was something in the office that I remember, uh, that I want to find a clip for, I'll put, uh, the office and that phrase in, or if there's a subject that I want to cut away for, one of the things I'll do is I'll, I'll put in the show that I think would have that a subject like that. So if it was giraffes, say I was making a joke about giraffes, I would put uh, in YouTube search, uh, the family guy giraffe and see what, uh, Seth MacFarlane thinks about giraffes because Seth MacFarlane has something on every single topic, topic known to man, to man. Uh, so Family Guy, The Simpsons, uh, South Park, uh, all those kinds of places where they're doing lots of satire. I'll type a topic in and put the show title in, and then I do a, uh, a cut and paste, a screen capture and paste um, to put it into my, my video. Uh, there are some places you can't do that, like um, on uh, Prime Video or Netflix or things like that. They don't allow you to do screen captures. Uh, other places, I have an extensive DVD movie collection. And so when I know that I have the movie, I'll throw the DVD in and do a screen capture uh, from the video, from the DVD itself. 
Good question. Spyron691 says, why is it that we have to have them all in search of the perfect pen when they all have their own unique differences that we also like? I can't seem to stop. That's the thing. Uh, when someone says, why do you need so many pens? Uh, especially, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, but, but especially if it's a woman who's saying this, why do you need so many pens? You say, well, why do you need so many shoes? Quid pro quo. Hari uses the same website for quotes. Yeah, it's a it's a nice well of information. Russell says Doug is hiding from the Royal Mounted Police these days. <laughs> Virginia wants to know, are flex pens hard to find? Um, modern ones? There are specific brands that uh, lend themselves to flex pens. I wouldn't call them flex so much as uh, flexible. Flex is something that you can do a copper plate, copper plate calligraphy with. So they're designed specifically to split. So the fountain pen revolutions... Um, Flexible nib, for example, the Noodler's uh, Flexo is an Ahab, Noodler's Ahab. They're designed specifically to flex. And then there are those uh, nibs that are designed to be more bouncy and more flexible um, that that other brands are coming up with. Leonardo has their elastic nib, for example. So uh, What's more difficult to find is uh, the vintage ones. I mean, the vintage ones generally are more flexible, but finding ones that aren't broken because people don't know how to write with a flexible fountain, gold fountain pen, and they'll spring those nibs more often than not. Virginia says Hero is an Indian brand, right? No, that's not correct. Hero is the main company that makes pens in China. It is the overlord. It's the big pen company. It's been around since 1938. Uh, and they own a lot of the other sub-brands that you're seeing. It's hard to know what they own. Actually, there's a Wikipedia page that says all the brands that they own. I don't even recognize half of them. but And I don't believe all that stuff anyway. You know, I again, grain of salt. Anything coming out of China... Not at face value. Question it. Hero is very Chinese, says Shanghai Knife Dude. Yep, very, very Chinese. Um, they came out of the uh, revolution, 1939, 38, 39, something like that. Shanghai Knife Dude says Bobby is a nightmare. I don't know. I, I, I like some of the things he's doing. He does some some customized nib stuff, stuff, and he has some interesting products. Just don't believe what he says about these pens. You look at it yourself and see what it is. Um, but I've never had bad service from him. Jufro says... Bought a Wingsong 601A in black. Been using it for two months as a work pen. I absolutely love that pen and ordered three more. The 601A is a, is the one with the, the tubular nib. And it's a vacuum filler, a modern vacuum filler like the Parker original. Um, I have my 601 here. I have a 601A somewhere. I don't know where. But this is my 601 in flighter version. Uh, beautiful, beautiful pen. It has the uh, Parker 51 kind of nib, but it is a um, a pump filler. So that's a vacuumatic style, a modern version of the vacuumatic from the 1930s through early 40s. And the 601 and the 601A are excellent, excellent pens for cheap, cheap, cheap. Not the flighter version but for cheap, 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 and uh, you can get numbers of them um, for for little money, and uh, they just work, work, work. Mm 
Shanghai Knife Dude says, also beware of Bobby modified eyedropper Jin Hao. Yes, that is a total scam. You really, when you're buying from AliExpress or you're buying from, I don't buy from Temu anymore uh, because of the spyware involved in that app, but uh, from Etsy or from AliExpress, if you're buying from a Chinese uh, supplier, buyer beware. Be careful of what you're getting. Look at the um, the vendor. Um, I know that 365 Days Stationery is a, a big um, retailer on AliExpress. And uh, Doodlebutt is getting all of his pens from them now. Um, I've had some bad experiences with them. Uh, but uh, they don't misrepresent what they're selling. Then there is a couple of others on Etsy, and I, I only do Easy Buy on Etsy, Easy Buy and Pen BBS. Uh, but on AliExpress, there's a couple of of resellers that you should avoid. Um, I got a pen recently that came in a very thin black plastic bag with no bubble wrap, nothing, and I and it took uh, eight weeks for it to come. It wasn't broken. But it took eight weeks and it wasn't packed. So I make a note of that seller, never using that seller again. Okay, so. Oscar says, I work from home, so I get the mail before the wife gets home. The pen collection just magically grows. Well, if she's watching this live stream now, you're out. <laughs> your method has uh, lost its madness. Elizabeth Rosa says, your videos are really great and helpful. Thank you for all the time and work you put into them. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate that very much. I only do it because it's fun. Once it stops being fun, like people when people are mean to me, I don't think when people are mean to me, Hurts my feelings. Virginia has to go. Thank you for joining us, Virginia. It's 11.18 p.m. in India. Nice attending the live stream. Bye-bye. Uh, my Russian friend says, I've always been interested in why you're choosing between Asvine P20 and Moonman M800. Always choose Moonman, even though Asvine is an improved version of the M800. Um... The Asvine is a piston filler, yes, uh, but I still find, I think it's because I like the Leonardo Momento Zero. It's one, one of, if not my favorite pens, one of the top five pens that I own are Momento Zeros, of course, this one. This is my the pen that does my opening ink acquiring minds scrawl. This is the blue Hawaii Memento zero. It was my first Leonardo. Uh, it has a custom architect grind nib by Jack Hernandez. And I just, for my hand, this pen is just sublime. I just love it. The moon man M 800 copy of the Memento zero is almost a perfect copy. Um, so perfect that I put a Leonardo nib in it and it, it basically is a Leonardo. It is a cartridge converter and I've asked Leonardo, I've asked Salvatore a number of times, make, make a Momento Zero with a piston. They can do it. I know he's done it before. Very expensive, but make one at a reasonable price and I will eat it up. This is almost a Momento Zero. This is the uh, Asvine P20. It's almost a Momento Zero uh, with a piston and an ink window. Uh, almost. It just doesn't post the same. It doesn't exactly feel and balance the same. So that's why I'm choosing the M800 Moonman M800 Moonman Majon over the P20. 
but it's really close, really close between these two pens. So that's my reasoning there. Ivan wants to know, what other YouTube content creators do you follow? I follow, follow Stephen SBRE Brown because he's a friend. He just lives a half an hour north of me. And we have coffee now and then. And uh, he's got the best uh, pen reviews on the planet, I think, because he just has a wealth. He's been doing it for 12 years, I think, something like that. So he just knows it all. I don't like people like that. They, you know, take all the mystery out of life. But uh, so I watch <laughs> Stephen Brown and I watch um, um, Chris Rapp, 52, Chris Rapsaic. Uh, he's the engineer from, uh, New Jersey, uh, and he's been doing fountain pens and, uh, restoring them and collecting them and talking about them and loving them for like 40 years. Uh, and so if you want to know anything about fountain pens, anything at all, Chris is the place to go and he's been doing his YouTube channel forever. So that's another channel that I watch. I watch, uh, Doodlebud. He's another engineer. He's a fellow Canuck. He's from Vancouver, I think. And uh, his videos are very entertaining. And he just speaks so well. And he's an engineer. Uh, and he knows how to design things and how to engineer them and manufacture them. Because that's his, I think that's his profession. And so he sees things in pens and the way they're manufactured that ordinary humans don't. So I'm always getting uh, really good insight uh, from him. Um, and I also call him a friend. He sent me a gift pen one time. I got forest noises going on over my head. And a number of others. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, I watch, uh, uh, Goulet pens, um, especially between, uh, uh, Brian Goulet and, I always forget his sidekick's name, but they're funny together. So I watch that all the time. Oh, and I watch Applebaum. Of course, I watch Yoast. I get a kick out of his uh, pen quizzes and his uh, guest stars and all this kind of stuff. And I was uh, really happy to be part of that uh, process uh, a few times over the last year. Squid Pro Row. Yep. Shanghai Knife Dude says, some rumors from China, you guys hear. Moon Man 139 soon release. Homage to Mont Blanc Hemiway. Number 8, Steel. Ebonite Feed. Regular Piston. Well, that will be interesting. A Mont Blanc Hemiway. Um, and that's what you're saying? The Moon Man 139 is the homage to the Hemingway? With a number 8 size nip. Well, uh, seeing a Moon Man that I'm... Assuming you mean Majon, uh, we'll be coming out with an eight size nib. Will be interesting. Luke M says the same for Twisby before they used to make pens for different companies. Yes, and uh, interesting about Twisby, they they very much copied the Pelican uh, piston design out of the M eight hundred and M one thousand pens and put them into their Twisbees, and uh, then tried to claim ownership over it, uh, even though it's public domain. So the answer to the question, what's the Doug's Mailbag film from? Doug's Mailbag. That is, of course, Miracle on 34th Street, uh, the great film from 1938, something like that, the original. And that was uh, the actor Gene Lockhart getting his uh, judge's desk covered in mail, which I thought was really cool. Tor Hilder says, Bobby is the illimit, illegitimate son of Betty Crocker when she had a Chinese adventure. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Michael Reiber says, a new Moonman P139, hopefully more sellers on Alley will sell it. 
not like the exaggerating prices of the P138 or Admoc M800. I think they're getting pretty high, those prices now. The Admoc M800 is at the top end of what you should be paying. Um, the... The new acrylic on the version 2 is better and almost worth it. But those prices are, are pretty high, I think. Uh, the Moonman P138 is a nice pen, but it's getting up there in price. Alfredo Gallardo says, oh please, China's almost legit fake Blancs are awesome. Of course, this is sarcasm. Yeah. The fake ones, when when they actually say Mont Blanc or MB... You know, you can get these pens called MB149. It's awful. They're awful. I've got one of those fakes. It's a Lamy uh, Dialogue 3. And it's the worst piece of crap. <laughs> uh, you get what you pay for. They're, I mean, they're you, obviously they're fakes because they're like 30 bucks or something like that. So, uh, you know, you're not going to get a Lamy Dialogue 3 for 30 bucks. Uh, but the workmanship is shoddy. Uh, but the ones that are trying to copy, like the Moon Man and the Magon, they make them really well. You've got to admit those pens are made really, really well. Um, so the quality there, the Hongdian pens, they're not copying quite so much. Uh, they're paying homage. So this Hongdian, can't remember what it is, Hongdian N12 is a Pelican M800 uh, homage. It's not a copy of the Pelican M800. Not at all. But it's a beautiful pen and very, very well made. So there are some companies that, uh, that are doing the homage, the similar to kind of pen and building them very, very well. I've been very impressed with Hongdian's quality over the years. William Catalano says, I thought about getting the fake Egyptomania Chinese pen until Doug talks sense into me. Yeah, I have that around here somewhere. It's holding the door open. Yeah. Yeah, piece of crap. Shanghai Knife Dude. By saying hero from 1937, don't forget the nationalized in 1958. Cultural revolution, nothing was as it used to be since. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's when the company started, 38, 39, something like that, Hero. But certainly, uh, they're nowhere near what they were. But Hero is the company in China that everybody went to in the West to have to tap their cheap labor market. So, you know... <laughs> You got to say, well, oh, gee, they stole all these designs. Well, boy, didn't the West go tongue hanging out, waiting to get into that Chinese market? It was Parker that went to um, to China in the late seventies, um, gushing with enthusiasm about China making their Parker forty five for them. And one of the things they tried to do was they tried to tap into the Chinese market. So they wanted to sell Parker pens in China. And so the whole negotiation took a whole summer in 1979. And so Parker went over. They not only took all the designs and the plans of the Parker 45 to Hero, they brought the machines and the dies and the tooling with them. And Hero made prototypes of the Chinese Hero Parker 45 for Parker, and they were going to make a deal um, that China Hero would make Parker's 45 for them, um, and they would be able to sell that around the world uh, and have much, much lower labor costs, of course, because they're made in China. But part of the deal was that Parker wanted to tap into the Chinese market. So after a whole summer of negotiations, uh, the negotiations fell through because China said, nope, you are not allowed to sell in China. We can sell to the rest of the world. We will build your pens for you and you can sell them around the world, but we reserve the right to sell to China. And so the deal fell through and in part, a parting gift for uh, 
being part of this possible um, deal, Parker gave Hero the plans, the tool and die, and the machinery to keep. Let that sink in. Okay, They wanted to get into the Chinese market. And so look carefully at the box that your pen comes in, because, I mean, that was 1979. It's 2024. We're still doing this. Okay, China's still making things for Western brands. Monteverdi, all they're, they're all mostly made in China. Conklin, mostly made in China. So here endeth the rant. I'm reading through. Hari says, I only watch a couple. Fig boot on pens. Yes, I, I missed, of course, David Parker is a wealth of information, especially for higher-end pens, uh, things that ordinary mortals can't afford. Um, it's nice to see that kind of eye candy uh, and cool pens. Uh, Doodlebud, JG3. Yes, I like James's reviews. He's very straightforward, very pleasant fellow. Uh, sometimes Hemingway Jones, if it's on the weekends where I relax. Yes. I, I've, uh, chatted with Hemingway Jones, um, on Yoast's, uh, channel. And his reviews are very interesting as well. Drew. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Hari says his name is Drew Brown. Yeah. So, uh, Brian Goulet and Drew Brown, they're very funny. Uh, the mutton chef of the pen world. Oscar Medina says, I watch all of the major fountain pen channels. You, Doug, are the very best, then Doodlebud, then others. Stephen Brown is further down the list. Aw, that's so nice of you to say, Oscar. The check is in the mail. I should probably, before we get too late here, it's 12-12 right now for me, which is 11-12 uh, uh, on the West Coast. Um, I wanted to, while I got a bunch of people here, give away some memberships. I started doing this, uh, last month, found that I could actually find out how to do it. And, uh, the first giveaway of five memberships to my channel went very successfully because one of them went to my daughter. So we're going to do this again to see wh how many other of my family members might get memberships when I give them away. It was such a shock to me that that happened. But here we go. Let's see if I can click the right buttons. Super sticker, super chat, membership, uh, gifting. Here we are. Uh, okay, gift five now. Are you all ready? Are you sitting by your computers? If you get a message that you've been gifted a membership, it's from me. Because I get five of them from YouTube every month. And every uh, live stream I do, Every month, I will do this. And let's see what happens. And the wheel is spinning. And the wheel is spinning. It has been announced. Suave P was gifted a membership. Daniel Tran was gifted a membership. Suzanne at Susan Art was gifted a membership. Shibendu Sina was gifted a membership. And Lam Naguyan was gifted a membership. Congratulations. You are now a full member and you can see, sorry, you can see the full membership. Uh, that's what she said. Uh, <laughs> so you get to see all the backstage stuff, all the nuts and bolts. You get to see the unboxing videos uh, when they, uh, they come up uh, in advance. You get to see my videos when I put them up, not when I schedule them to go up. So you get to see them early. Uh, and you get uh, cool badges and emojis and, and little stickers and things that go next to your name to make you feel so special. This is only for a month, limited time. So at the end of the month, you'll lose your special membership, but you can continue it for only 99 cents a month if you like. And I'll do that again uh, next month. So I want to get back to my agenda here. I've been answering a lot of questions. I've been pontificating a lot. So just ignore my rants. Let's see. I have been asking you a question. Oh, we got to talk about what? Uh, we got to talk about uh, Lammy Uniball. 
I did want it. Yeah. Jeez. Don't know how to click the buttons. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I did want to ask you guys about the Lammy controversy. Lammy um, actually was sold. Uh, we got the news last month that Lammy has been sold to a Japanese com company. Yeah, so they've turned Japanese. And I thought that was the big news, pen news of the month. And when we talked last, when we talked last month, I went on and on about the sale. And people said, oh, it's about the ink, the dark lilac ink controversy. And I had read that and thought, yeah, it's not a thing. But boy, was I wrong. No one cares about the fact that Lamy has been sold to a Japanese company, Uniball. Um, <laughs> and no one seems to care about that, which I think is the big news. They care the fact that the dark lilac that was the limited color uh, they reissued the dark lilac with the same name and it's a slightly different color. I think, so what? Um, maybe people felt ripped off if you bought the expensive dark lilac before or you bought the new lilac thinking it was the old lilac uh, because you're, an, I don't know, is it an investment? Is ink an investment that will, you know, ink gets moldy and goes bad over time. So I don't see it as an investment either. So I don't, I don't get what's going on with that controversy. So, uh, let me think, let me hear your thoughts about why the dark lilac versus the dark, dark lilac has so many knickers in a twist all around the world. Andrew Wertheimer morning from Hawaii. Hari wants to talk about the current controversy. Yes. Oscar says she said it again. She keeps saying it over and over again. I don't know why. There's Rob. Yes, I answered your question at length. So you'll have to uh, uh, view back the video when it goes up after we're finished. And it is 12.17 for me. We've got a few minutes left. Russell says he's cutting me off of my coffee for the rest of the day. Well, I don't drink coffee. I gave it up for Lent. Uh, years ago. I drink tea. Mm, that's good. And that is PG Tips. Harry says the slight difference in color doesn't bother you. I don't have either color. Um, I don't like the color. So maybe that's why I don't care. Russell Jew, Randall Jew says, you wouldn't think so, but dark lilac bottles were being sold for a couple hundred dollars on the aftermarket. Yes. Okay. So you're, you're dumb enough to buy a bottle of dark lilac aftermarket because it was the old stuff and it's rare. Um, really? You know, buy an ink like that. I suppose if you're really partial to an ink. Like I was really partial for years and years to the uh, um, Peacock ink uh, by Schaefer. I grew up with it. I wrote with uh, that color all through high school. Uh, and they don't make it anymore. Am I going to pay a couple hundred dollars for an old bottle of Peacock ink? No, I'm going to find something that's close. Uh, Bill Pemberton says, only an investment if you use to sign a lucrative contract. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. True that. Luke M., I agree the selling to Mitsubishi Corp. is a big news. Yeah. Um, how big, we don't know. It's like Pelican was sold to another company. Uh, I think they're based in France. Uh, we The proof is in the pudding. We have to see how Pelican is going to behave. Will they have another ink of the year, for example, coming next fall? Uh, what will the new pen, new fountain pens look like? 
fountain pens are a very, very small part of this uh, company. Same thing with uh, Lamy. Lamy fountain pens are a very small part of the Mitsubishi Corporation, Uniball. Uh, one of the things that I think they said in their press release uh, from Uniball was that they were going to continue to explore and develop the idea of digital writing. Uh, Lamy did a digital pen at one point. I did a review of one uh, a couple of years ago. It's where you write on a special page and it will digitize your handwriting into documents for you. And it was in a Lamy Safari pen. Um, it's not a fountain pen at all. It's very much like a ball. It is a ballpoint, uh, but it has special sensors in it and things like that. And so I was interested in that. They want to continue with uh, partnering with Lamy and Uniball because they were partnered to do this digital writing technology before. Uh, so that in, is interesting as a direction. What's going to happen to fountain pens with Lamy? That'll be interesting to see. Yeah, Andrew Weimars, Wertheimer says, Lamy will want to keep the German staff and maybe cross-train their staff. Many Japanese companies are trying to become international as one way of changing the company culture. I have a family in Japan and... Hikoko says, I guess people who heard of it got excited when the new one was released, bought it, and then were disappointed and felt cheated that it wasn't the same one they'd heard about. Okay. Yeah, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. It's a bottle of ink. If they paid $500 for a new limited edition dark lilac that was advertised as the old dark lilac, yeah. And I can see that they get pissed off because they called it the same. They, whoever is in marketing there for that is, I think it got sacked because it was stupid. They should have called it the new dark lilac minimum. So, but still it's a bottle of ink. People feel how they feel, but controversy in this specific case seems a bit artificial. Yeah. Doesn't it? That's from Rob Beamer. Beamer. Andrew says, we talk about this kind of thing. It's hard to change corporate culture. Uh, yeah. Laverne Clark. Hi, Laverne. Dark lilac. It's the fountain pen equivalent of sneakerheads. Eh. <laughs> you know, I think about that too. Russell Bickford says, Noodler's, Noodler's Inc. had done a limited ink and people were buying it and listing it on eBay and making big bucks. So yeah. That kind of speculation is just stupidity. If you're going to buy that kind of stuff and inflate, you know, you might as well buy Bitcoin again, but I'm old fashioned. What do I know? <clears throat> David Collins Cubit says diamine Havasu turquoise is a good replacement. Yes, but interesting, a really close match to the old Pelican Quink, uh, uh, not Pelican, uh, Schaefer Quink. Um, it's not Schaefer Quink. It's Schaefer Scrip. That's what it is. The Schaefer Scrip Peacock Blue is Lamy Turquoise. Well, I've got a bottle of Lamy Turquoise and it's very close. It's kind of like, for me, when someone says, this guitar is better than that guitar, because this one has ivory bridge pins and this one has plastic bridge pins. You do a blind test. Uh, no, it doesn't work for ink <laughs> doing a blind test, but do a blind test between two instruments that one person says, Oh, this one's so much better when you do this to it. You cannot tell major differences. Yeah. But bridge pins, not so much, you know, snake oil. So with this difference in color, yeah, sure. There's a difference in color, but big deal. Randall Zhu says they're going to release a new one out here. Well, that'd be interesting. Isn't digital writing math? Uh, no. Digitizing your writing, I think, is the idea. Is that you write in a book, 
and then it transfers it to the, the uh, a document. I gave that uh, digital pen to my wife, who is a writer, uh, and we've just uh, her book just was published yesterday, and we're going to feature it on a future uh, YouTube video, and uh, do some sales of some signed copies of her new book, Stone Gold D. But while she's writing, she likes to write longhand. And so we're sitting at the beach or whatever, and she'll have a notebook. And so um, she writes with the digital pen and then transfers that information to her computer, and it comes up in her word processor. So she doesn't have to look at her notes and type it over again. I think it's a very cool little tool. I wouldn't use it. Alfredo Gallardo says, The fountain pen community in reality is too small to create a real controversy. To me, it's just a bunch of entitled pricks that didn't get get what they wanted. <laughs> um, he said it. I didn't. I didn't say entitled pricks. You shouldn't say entitled pricks. That's not nice. So we won't say entitled pricks anymore. But yeah, I agree. Torhilder says, I wouldn't be surprised if Mitsubishi announced the inclusion of a digital pen for the Japanese school curriculum. It would be a huge market for them. I'm not, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, and that was one of the, because they collaborated on that project a couple of years ago. And so they all, Mitsubishi and Lamy already had a corporate relationship previously. Uh, Shanghai Knife Dude says some prototype digital pen was done by Schneider in 2004, but proved a failure. Um, I thought the digital pen from Lamy uh, was pretty good, actually. It was like 90%. There was one, and the thing is that when it didn't recognize some things, if you did your capital letters in, in script, and it didn't recognize what that letter was, you just sort of practiced what letter would, you know, how would I write the letter G uh, so it would recognize it. And then when you're writing, just remember, oh yeah, I can't put a capital G like I usually do with my curly cues on it. It just doesn't recognize it. So I'll just put a regular G in there. Of course, it recognized printing easier. Ivan Razzo says, congrats to your wife. Thank you very much. We're very, very proud. Andrew Weitheimer says, Wertheimer says, Japanese birth rate low. Do companies are looking to expand overseas? I think the merger acquisition is good match as they have. Complementary product lines, Lamy has good sales in Japan. Yeah, I think it's probably good for both companies. And Lamy did say it was a family-owned thing, I think, right, Lamy? And uh, the family said that they just wanted some guarantees as much as you could get guarantees, um, that Lamy remains Lamy. J Lo, I miss out was my miss out was Noodler's Blue upon the Plains of Abraham. Only have samples. Doug, what are your recommendations for a similar ink? Um, I only have two Noodler's inks and I don't really like either of them. So I've never used the Plains of Abraham. Um, one of the things I dislike about the Noodler's inks is how full they are. I mean, what's with that? You know, you have an accident immediately that you open the, the bottle. What's with that? Russell wants to know, anybody else buy the Abit Abit? A beat automatic inking fountain pen. I was offered one <laughs> to review. They emailed me and said, would you be interested in, in reviewing our automatic filling uh, fountain pen? I said, sure, send one on. And I gave them my address and they go, oh, sorry, you're Canadian. You can't join. So, sorry. Only for the U.S. So I said, um, bleep. Copper Plate says, Doug, you're looking younger than ever today. 
Uh, thank you, copper plate. <laughs> it must be the tea. It's PG tips. I highly recommend. We men in tea appreciate our PG tips. Mmm. And you may keep the tip. Well, that made me feel younger right away. Just, just saying that. Thank you. Makes a note to send a free membership to Copper Play. Oh, wait. You already are a member. Uh, Ivan wants to know, did I get a chance to try the Enzo Bolt Action Fountain Pen? No, I didn't. I th Have I seen it? I might have seen it. I've done bolt action uh, ballpoints before. Um, also, is um, just get your feedback here. How's the stream going? Uh, in March, I had a real difficulty with the stream cutting out and people getting dropped and things like that. Is everybody experiencing the stream better? I've set it to another setting and I've got my uh, laptop plugged in to Ethernet rather than Wi-Fi. So I'm hoping that uh, my stream has a much better quality. I did some um, troubleshooting with my son. We sort of walked through what all the bottlenecks might be in my system here. And uh, I got an adapter for my MacBook and I'm now running this through Ethernet wired rather than wireless. Perfectly stable, says Laverne. Looking good. Great. Excellent. Best yet. Let's let's do this. Let's see if, it, if this works. Does this work? No. It worked last time. Come on. No. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. I must have turned those things off. <laughs> I changed a number of settings. I used to get all these effects, uh, but not anymore. Okay. Oh, well, I have to find that button and turn it back on again. Jufro says the lighting is doing well for you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, soft lights. And where, where did I see? Did I see Sally here somewhere? There's Sally. Streaming instead of going to pen club. <laughs> Today is pen club. Uh, the Calgary pen club uh, I belong to, and I don't, I end up joining very often because, as I've explained to, to Murray, our Grand Imperial Puba of the Calgary International Pen Club, um, that by the time Saturday comes around, I am so done with pens that I don't want to even think about it. Uh, because by Saturday, I have created at least two, possibly three pen videos. One of them is a long restoration. One is a review and one might be a shorty. And by the time Saturday comes around, I sit down and say, okay, I just want to spend Saturday and not do anything, uh, regarding fountain pens until maybe Monday. Uh, so I tend to duck out, but especially when I do these uh, live streams on Saturday, uh, there is a pen meeting, uh, coming up in an hour, uh, way up north in Calgary. So, and it's uh, snowing out. So I will not be getting in my car and driving to the north today, Sally, and to join you guys. Uh, but I see that the, the pen club meeting is meeting in South Calgary on the 13th. So I will probably show up for that one. So mark your calendars. Jufro says, I recently swamped the nib in an Asvine V126 with an old Schaefer touchdown that the body was unsalvageable. Turned out really, really well. What is your favorite nib swapped pen? <coughs> Pardon me. Um, I don't know that I have one pen that I've... Well, my M1, M800 Moon Man. <coughs> Let me... Pardon me, I'm coughing into the mic. I shouldn't be doing that. It's rude. Let's go to my desk and see whether I can get close up on this nib for you. So there, let's get 
mic over here. So that is a Leonardo 1.1 stub. And I swapped that into my Moonman M800 Galaxy. And that is just a fantastic pen now. It's on my desk with, I have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, something like 15 pens that are within reach on my desk that I reach for every day when I write in my journal. I write in my journal every night, so I remember what I did the day before. If I fail to write in my journal, if I forget on an evening and don't do it, I cannot remember what I did yesterday. So I call it my Alzheimer's uh, journal. <laughs> Let's come back. Here we go. So I hope that answers that question. William says the stream is the best yet. Good. Perfectly stable. Stream is looking good in Mexico. Good. Torhilder says the stream is perfect. How's the weather in Iceland? Cloudy with a chance of fireballs. Shanghai Knife Dude says, on the contrary, Japanese domestic will be buying Lamy after it's being under uni. Japanese something pure Deutschland, not some franchise. Japanese, I don't understand that. Buying Lamy after it's being under uni. I thought that was the idea that they bought Uniball, bought Lamy. Russell has the Abit pen. It's nice. The only current downside is they have not made the refiller unit so you can fill the bottle that the ink comes in. I contacted them and they said that they're probably going to. Hi, Gina. Thank you for the thumbs up. Andrew Wertheimer wants to know what's up with Pen BBS. I've answered this, well, answered as best I understand it. Um, they were hit hard by the pandemic. And uh, I think that uh, Zhilong Su has been focusing on creating these specialty gold nibs and not looking into fountain pen design so much. They came out with the year of the rabbit pen um, just under the deadline. I'm hoping we'll see a new model from them soon, but they, yes, they have been very quiet. It's now 1238. We're coming to the end here. I'm going to get through a couple of more of these comments. Tara Chilton wants to know, do you know anything about Paper Mate Mark 7 from West Germany from the 80s? Is it a Mont Blanc nib? I do not know anything about the Paper Mate Mark 7. Sounds familiar, but I don't know anything about it. <coughs> Russell finished his statement. The refilled unit will be available for sale in May. Good to know. I might have to go out and buy one just to give it a try since they won't give me one because I'm a Canadian. Um, will I give them a poor review because they've discriminated it against Canadians? Perhaps. I turned, Enzo complains about the damn commercials. I turned them down to the lowest setting so that they only come up every, I think it's 45 minutes or something like that the lowest setting that you can put them at. But yeah, I get commercials too. Not during my live stream, but when I'm watching back my own videos, I have to wait for those damn things too. But every time you see a commercial, cha-ching, I get paid. Yeah, it keeps me in, in uh, coffee and cigarettes, even though I don't drink coffee or smoke. Shanghai Knife Dude says, I remember we blamed Mitsubishi for breaking the internet connection. <laughs> yeah, why not? Let's let's blame Uniball. <clears throat> uh, 
Andrew Wertheimer says you should do a live meet with your pen club. Our Honolulu pen club has a Zoom link for peeps on neighbor islands and some expats. Uh, yeah, we actually have more Zoom meetings than we have uh, in-face, in-person meetings. Um, we generally have in-person, face-to-face meetings once every couple of Saturdays. Uh, but every other week, we'll have a, a Zoom meeting on the Saturday and add in uh, Tuesday nights as well sometimes uh, to get people together. And we do have some people who are international. We have some Americans on our Calgary Pen Club channel, and it's uh, nice to see people uh, from afar. Uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Let's see. Living Armor says, I've never used a broad nib. Is the Pilot 78G with a broad nib a good choice for a first? Yeah, they're, they're not as broad as a Western broad, but uh, 78Gs, they're inexpensive. If you can get a, a broad nib on a 78G, I don't think I've ever seen one. But yeah, if you can get them, they're terrific. The Pilot nibs are so interchangeable. It's, uh, it's great to experiment. <clears throat> Diego, hey Diego, Bat Bacini Lima. I have YouTube Premium, so I don't see the ads, and you end up receiving it anyway. Really? <laughs> Is that like when you buy a uh, an Amazon Prime membership, and you pay every month so you can get the Prime videos, and then you say, oh. I'm not going to see this movie, and they charge you a dollar ninety nine to watch the film on the channel streaming that you've bought already, and then you get commercials on that. Isn't that wonderful? How modern modern society has uh, allowed that kind of ripoff. Remember when I'm old enough to remember when we went to cable TV, and the idea was you paid for cable so you didn't get all the commercials on the TV with your antenna. And then we got cable and then we got commercials on the cable. And then you could buy cable premium where you can get all the specialty channels. And then you get commercials on those too. Uh, Papiez Polak says, can I adjust the lines that my nib makes? It is more or less in different directions. It's not the same while writing up and down. Is this a nib grind thing? Uh, hmm. It all depends on the nib you've got, whether it's supposed to be a medium or, you know, a, a broad, or is it uh, thin in one direction and thick in the other direction, but it's not supposed to be? Because that's a stub nib. If it's thick down and thin horizontally, it's a stub. If it's thin down and thick horizontally, it's an architect. So that is the grind. But if you have a regular medium a round tip uh, fountain pen and it goes thin in one direction and thick in the other, that has to do with how well the, the nib is tuned. And you can tune that by using 8,000 and 12,000 grit uh, micromesh. Look for my video uh, on my channel that's talk, that talks about tuning nibs. I do some examples of how you do that. Uh, Torhilder says, uh, the B on the 78G is not a real bold nib. It's a stub. That's what I thought. I didn't think Pilot made a, a, bold, uh, a broad nib. It's not a good represent re representative of a bold nib. Yeah, a stub is a completely different animal. <clears throat> Diego says, ha ha, it's not the same as Amazon Prime. It's more that I pay... To not see YouTube commercials, the creator receives proportionally more for more than for the ads I should see. And I still have YouTube music not having to pay for Spotify. Well, that's cool. That's interesting. No, I keep getting that thing pop up. Do you want to choose, you know, the uh, premium YouTube? No, I don't. So we are coming to the end of our live chat today. I really appreciate you all coming today and chatting with me. It's uh, it's lovely to see so many people out. Um, let's look at my agenda again. Next live stream. The next live stream uh, will be on Saturday, May 4th 
at 10 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. That's uh, Pacific Time in Los Angeles. Do your time zone calculation accordingly. And if you get up in the middle of the night to watch Little Old Me, I really appreciate it. And I'll be giving away another five memberships to my channel uh, in May. Uh, congratulations to the five people that got the memberships today. And thank you all very, very much for joining me. And it's good night for me, and it's good night from him. Take care. We'll see you again soon.